Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Let's put the oop micro microwave. <laughs> okay, let's put the microphone a little bit closer. Yes, it might help to call it the microphone and not the microwave. <laughs> this is what it's going to be like, okay. <laughs> Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Oh my goodness, I think Karen is on cruising speed today. She has been welcoming everyone. That's so lovely, Karen. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Hello, Julie. Hi, Teresa. I saw you there as well. And everybody else. Oh, my goodness. Alana. Hello, Deborah. Hi, Rachel. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Beth. How are you? Susan, hello. Hi, Angela. Hi, Vanita. Oh, my goodness. You're here again. Thank you so much. She has to stay up really late. And I guess it's past one o'clock now at her house. So closer to two, I think. Hi, Dee. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our live. Hello, Bridget. Nice to see you. Hello, Krista. Hi. Oh my goodness. Hello, Dag Ingrid. Hello, hello. Hi, Jan. Crocheting. Hello. Hi, Ingrid. Hello. Oh my goodness. Look at all these names. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the live. If you are a regular here, welcome. If you're here for the first time, you are in for a treat. And I hope you will feel welcome and you will come back as well. Thank you all for being here. It's so nice to. Well, I can't see you, but it's so nice to have you here. We had the Zoom sessions for the Cal Start. So we started doing some Zoom sessions. We'll be repeating them in a few months or maybe even next month with a topic so we can talk. But this time I really wanted to do it for the Zoom. And oh my goodness, how lovely was it? for me to see people. So now I'm here staring at myself thinking, oh my goodness, my hair and my this and my what, you know. But oh my, it was so nice to actually be talking to a face, you know, and not just me, to see their reactions, to see the people, to um, you know, to see, they showed me their crochet work, you know, to see what was going on. Oh my goodness. It was so nice to have that kind of interaction. I tell you, it's, yeah, it was wonderful. So we will be doing that again. Uh, yes. Well, what have I got up my sleeve today? We are going to be talking about crochet wearables or crochet blankets. What type of tutorials, of projects, do you like the best? So think about it for a moment, okay, while I get myself settled, while we all say hello, and while we have a little bit of a talk about the cal, of course, because yes, we, of course, we started with our cal this Friday. And I have seen, it was so lovely, wasn't it, Mandy, to put faces to names? Exactly. I have seen so many already, you know, pictures. Um, I'm loving it. This is how it's going. All things like that. So I am really pleased that you um, are liking the project that you're liking the technique and that, of course, that you're liking doing it and that we are all making it. And that's so nice. Hello. Hello. Hi, Bami. You're in Bavaria. Welcome. Welcome. Wearables. Yes. <laughs> ah, Laura. OK. OK. That's yeah. Right, we'll talk about that in a moment. But yes, I am really happy to show you, of course, our colour theory blanket. I hope you've had a good start if you are making it. Um, if you um, are making it, please make sure you do look 
closely at our blog post, okay, where you go and get the color order. Make sure you read through everything. There are 80 rows to complete this week, so don't forget you've got two tables of colors to download, okay? And also, I have included, I have included the um, diagram of what what a not it's not a diagram it's a drawing it's a it's a shape of what your blanket should look like and you might think it's okay this week but it's going to be more important towards the next weeks because it's you've got to just get your head around how you're going to construct this blanket okay but that's just you know just keep an eye on it just check it and make sure everything is going well so i'm really pleased that um I'm really pleased that you're liking the pattern and I know that some of you have not been able to wait to get started because during the Zoom sessions quite a few of you had already started and I also know that some of you can't put it down. Can't put it down. So I am hoping that yeah. Jan it's so it goes so fast. It goes so fast because of course you're not doing 80 full rows. You are growing each row. So you're starting with you know one cluster and that's your row and that's so marvelous because every row you will add one cluster. Okay? So yes, I hope you are enjoying that and I hope that um you know I want to see progress pictures, okay? So um Make sure you take a picture. Um, let me know in the Facebook group how you're doing, how you're finding it. I would love to see your progress. OK, and I have already seen some people start not with the colors from the color theory, of course, but with other packs with their own colors. And oh, my goodness already seeing the different versions seeing the different amazing it's just amazing so yes i am looking out for those different ones and of course yes i mean it's great that you're making the color theory as i designed it but it's always interesting for me certainly to see the ones that you you know sort of the ones that you run away with the pattern that you make it your own and that's what i like to see as well Hi, Marianne. Welcome, welcome. Ah, Bami. Do you know what? That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. Ingrid, almost done with your 80 rows. Well done. Well done. Yeah. So we have got a lot of different... Uh, yarn packs, different colorways that you could do this in. With any of our yarn packs, you could do this in. Just, just, just uh, replace the numbers, the colors, and off you go. Now, I do have to say, if you noticed that it was going a little bit in a funny shape to start with, if you went up a hook, started again, went up a hook, compared the two, then it would have, you know, you would have been able to choose the one that you um, found the best, found that you know, made, made the nicest shape. So some of you have had to do that and that's, that's the way it goes. Okay. That's perfectly all right. That's something that happens. My mum also had to uh, restart. She started yesterday afternoon. I was like, really? Cause normally she's not that sort of like, Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll do it later. So yes. So she started but she's also had to restart because she needed to go up a, a hook size. It's really, really unbelievable how different a reaction we can get from a particular pattern. Dep it all depends on tension. All depends on tension. I made mine with a three and a half. And a lot of people have had to go up with the four to a bigger hook yes there we go so mary joe murray she's got yeah mary joe you've gone up to a four it's better there we go see so if that happened to you if that is the case you haven't gone too far yet like sunshine it, you can see it already in the color sunshine if it happens that it is a little bit sort of bowing start again with a bigger hook and see the difference and then you can choose which one you're going to continue with
Okay, so I have seen a couple of uh, reactions already to do we like wearables, do we like shawls, um, blankets. But of course, with wearables, there are shawls and there are actual wearable wearables, like a cardigan, right? So I guess that's two different things as well, okay? Because you're making a wearable without sizing almost, you know, like this, the reading shawl, the reading shawl, um, it's almost without size. You just make it until it's comfortable for you to wear, until it's big enough for you to sort of wrap it around and it stays, right? So that kind of wearable would be different from a cardigan where you would have to really size it to your body or to the recipient's body. So I guess, you know, if we are talking about wearables, we need to, you know, think about those two as well. But is it a blanket that you like making or is it a wearable? So I've seen, yes, Chris, thank you. This is the reading shawl. It's one of my pop most popular videos. Yeah or project even, you know. Um, so the, um, you know, I've just, I just saw somebody said, I like making wearables because a blanket takes too long. A blanket is too big and it takes too long. And of course, yes, that's very likely that that is true. It is a lot to make a blanket, but yeah. I think making a blanket like a cow, that would make it work for you, you see. That would make it so you are breaking it down into portions, you know, and that makes it manageable. Yeah, Julie, you make more blankets and you make the mini ones too. Yeah, see, so the mini ones work as well for, you know, uh, like, for example, um, to give to a baby or, you know, you can do things with mini blankets as well. So, you know. Oh, thank you, Jan. I'm going to the hairdresser on Tuesday. <laughs> what should I do? What should I do? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. So Mary Jo says she likes all the different stitches. So I try to design blankets, especially the cowl ones. I mean, obviously not this one because the spring cowl, we always concentrate on a technique. So this is the technique that we're working on, the diagonal granny stripe. But the autumn cowl generally is lots of different stitches and that breaks the boredom. You know, that breaks boredom, that makes it interesting and makes it so that you want to do the rest, that you want to work on the next few rows. For example, actually, with this blanket as well, if you see in the colour table that, oh, you know, it's only two rows. Oh, I can do that. I can do two rows. You're doing the two rows. And there you go. You've accomplished those two rows. And then it says five rows. And then you think, OK, let's do five rows. But, you know, let's find some Netflix. Let's watch something while we're doing this. And you're just crocheting away so that it's different uh, feelings towards how many rows you have to do. And that keeps you going, you know. Oh, wow. OK, so Debbie, you're saying um, she loves wearables, especially ponchos. I love ponchos as well. Ponchos are those kind of wearables, no sizing. So you can just make it and just keep going and, and, and it makes it bigger or smaller, depending on how you need it. So that's great. Um, a fitted one. You should try a fitted one. You should try it. Um, yeah. Blankets from time to time. Yeah. And you give them. Yeah. Delight in giving them to guests, yes, in offering them to get. Do you actually give them or do you just let them use them? <laughs> oh my goodness, yes, Patricia, the reading shawl is one of those, yeah. Oh, Jan, that's a relief. Oh my goodness, she's finally found her other set of higher, higher hooks. Thank 
goodness for that. Now we can all sleep better <laughs> knowing that Jan has found her hooks. <laughs> yes, Betty, yes. Of course, yeah, the different stitches for the blankets, great. But it's the sizing, yeah, okay. Um, this is the thing. Um, the way I was going to talk about this later on, but we might as well do this now. I realized that it's not easy to make a wearable that's going to fit you. And why is it not easy? Because if you have a pattern, I'm just going to say small, medium, large, they will include those sizes. They will include so many stitches for those sizes. And that's it. So they offer you three sizing, right? Now, when you go to a shop, which size are you in that particular shop? Right? I am a medium at Marks and Spencers, but when I go somewhere else, I might be a large. So depending on how the designer has sized their small, medium and large, you're going to get different sizes of garments. So always, whenever I go shopping, there's always something, whether the body is too short, whether the sleeves are not long enough. I don't like the closeness of the, I like an open neck, you know, something like this, where it's a little bit open. So do you know, Uh, you know, so let's continue this. Um, infinitely Zero. Nessa, hi. I was curious, why are those shawls called reading shawls? Well, actually, this is the shawl that I came up with. Can you see the way it's it's designed at the bottom? So it's not a V at the end. This is the shawl that I designed to go with the Greenway Cal. Whenever we do a cal, I also design a wearable. And of course, the Greenway was all about Agatha Christie and the, the books that she writes. And of course, I uh, wanted to sort of link the project. So this is a shawl that I designed that you have to wear while you're reading Agatha Christie. While you're sitting in bed and you're reading, you can wear your reading shawl. <laughs> That's why it's called the reading shawl. So it was Agatha's shawl that she used to wear when she was reading. No, it's not. But that's my, you know, my imagination. OK, so I always try to give my uh, projects a nice title, a nice link, a theme. So this was a shawl that we designed. So it would be easy for you to wear this while you're sitting in bed. Actually, that was my idea. But a lot of people have come up with the idea of, yes, it's easy for you to wear this while you're in bed, while you're in a sofa, but also in a wheelchair, because you don't have anything under your bum. You're not sitting on the chair, on the shawl, you know, you're just... Look, you know, it ends there. So it covers your back. Straighten up my back. It covers your back. It covers your arms while you're sitting there reading. Well, with another shawl, it might not do this. It doesn't do this. I always had cold elbows <laughs> when I had a normal um, triangular shawl. OK, so that's why it's called the reading shawl, because that's how I called it. OK. Yeah, Finita, a writing shawl, a cooking shawl, a cleaning shawl. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yes. So back to back to um, the sizing. OK, then uh, when I started making wearables, of course, I did follow some patterns. I made that grey sweater. I made a dress. I crocheted a dress. It, they were all patterns from somewhere else. I think one was a drops pattern. Um, there we go, you know. But when I um, 
when I made those patterns, they didn't fit me because one size was too small, one size was too large, one size was this, one size was was that. So I always had to adapt the pattern. So I was making the top a 14, you know, because, you know, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> um, and then from sort of midway here, I had to go down to a 12. So, you know, there was no sign. I couldn't follow one pattern because I had to, you know, adapt it. So when I give you a wearable that is sized, I give you ways of making it to your size. So for instance, I don't say small, medium or large, do so many, do so many, do so many. I say, make sure it comes from there to there, make sure it's this length, make sure it's that length. And that's how we made the marble cardigan. We made the um, starting hexagon two, and then we put them together. But doing the rows to put them together, you have got to try it on and see how many rows you have to do. Because your body is not the same as mine nor is anybody a standard size. So you, and then I tell you, do a couple of rows, try it on. Do a couple of more rows, try it on. How long would you like your cardigan? Would you like it shorter? Leave it shorter. Would you like it longer? Make it longer, you see? So that is how I size my, my items, my wearables. And I believe that Anybody can follow those instructions. I believe that you can make your own wearable to your size. Once you've done it, you will be able to make any, any of my projects to your size because you will have your sizes. You will know just about how big or how small or how tall or how short or how long you want to make it. So don't say you don't want to make a wearable that needs sizing because it's too hard or it's um you know daunting or whatever try it yes again tracy i also say use a wearable that you have bought that you already wear as a guide and put it down on your on your you know on your table lay your piece on it see how it works out how this how that then adjust it to your preference um and it just it works i've done this for so many things now um thank you linda thank you i'm so happy you enjoy my tutorials thank you yeah, Ingrid, fantastic. Well done. Um, moving to St. Augustine with Anastasia. No, Ophelia is just a name that I liked. My cat, who is the uh, logo of the channel, is called Layla. She's not here. No, she's not. She left. <laughs> Because when I start talking louder, um, she doesn't like it. So she maybe she'd come back. Um, she is around. Um, and yeah, it's just a name that I liked. Thank you, Denise. Thank you. Oh, is Ophelia your daughter's name? Oh, my goodness. That is wonderful. Yes, you must watch the channel then. <laughs> And my name's Anya, but I just chose Ophelia as the name for my channel because I liked it. And maybe if I had a baby, <laughs> actually, my daughter's called Rachel. So I also like that name. But um, yeah, Ophelia, I hadn't thought of doing that, actually. I should have called her Ophelia. <laughs> I don't think she would have liked that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, she doesn't like Rachel either, I don't think. <laughs> But who likes their own name, right? This, and this is why I've chosen Ophelia, because I like Ophelia. 
No, I've already got my next cat names lined up, Karen, and Ophelia isn't one of them. <laughs> so this exactly is the reading shawl, which uh, came with the Greenway cow. And of course, I know that you're all curious about which am I, which wearable am I going to link to, oh, I keep pointing in the wrong way, to the colour theory. Okay, so I have got it with me. I will put it on in a moment. And I am going to tell you what it is. But of course, we won't be able to, you know, share the tutorial just yet because excuse me, we are still doing the cow. We've only been doing this for one week and we have some packs left if you are still interested. So do go and have a look at our website. If you want to keep, you know, if you want to do the cow, you can catch up still. But of course, you know, um, you don't need to be quick you can still start it you can still do a cal after it has started it's still all there the videos stay online the blog posts stay there so you can go and you know, do it at any time really so that's good news um krista yeah so there is a um a it's all self-explanatory there's a link under the video and it tells you it takes you sorry it takes you to the blog post and there it has you have all the lists with where's my pieces of paper from yesterday i can't where are they um they it shows you the lists of colors so that you can tick them off as you do them okay so for every um for every uh, cal, there are blog posts like that. Oh yeah, Angela, Anya's amazing. What what is it? Technicolor coat. <laughs> yes, I think I need a few more thumbs up before I show you the wearable. I'm being naughty again. <laughs> so next week we'll continue our discussion about blankets or wearables in a moment but next week we are going to look at the cowl again so we'll have on Friday we will have the week two the week two but on Wednesday can you see that I have a painting there and it's a painting of the color wheel and on Wednesday I'm going to be Yes, yes, you have got to let me do this. I am going to be publishing a video on how to make all the colours from the cal with the three primary colours in paint. So really, it's just a fun video, okay? I'm just doing this. I just wanted to try and use the three primary colours and see if I could make the same colours as, of course, the Starcraft colours. Now you have got to think, I don't know how they, what kind of colours that they use. I don't know how they colour them. And of course, I was just using Windsor and uh, Newton paints. Uh, so obviously, it's just a fun video. But it's a good video for you just to watch while you're crocheting and see me struggle make these colours because I did have to cheat a little bit <laughs> because I could not make one of the colours. So I had to, um, yeah, I had to um, cheat. So there we go. Uh, yes, of course, Krista, the, the colour uh, chart will still work. You just have to substitute the colours. And I can't know what colours that you're going to be using. So you just substitute them with the colours. So you say, this is my Citron, this is my Sunshine, this is my, you know, like that. 
Aha, D. Yes, I know you're here. I know you're eager to see. And I don't know still why that went black, but never mind. I will make it up. I will make it up to you. So, yes, so there we are. That's the color chart. Did you see that one? Uh, and of course, here, can you see this? It's the circle. Now, last week, I had a slightly different view. Let me show you. So this is the color wheel. So this is the secondary color, the secondary color wheel uh, where we have six colors. But of course, you can make a primary one where you do two blue, two yellow and two red. And then you have the primary one. Right. And of course, the back. We are again playing with granny clusters. So this one was the diagonal granny cluster. We know how to do a granny square, right? And this one is granny clusters in a circle. And you know, you've got to do increases. And I've always not, well, I've never been able to do them. There she is. Leila. Leila. You ask her to me. Not now. I can't brush you now. Come. Come. Come and start the mensa. Come. Come. Let go. Oh, she's looking at me like, what are you on about? Come on. I'll go and get her in a minute. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this is one of the things that is coming up in the few weeks. OK, so we'll talk about that later on as well. Let's just see if I can throw it back. OK, it's OK. It's lying down, but it's there. Look. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so those are the kind that those are the projects that we're going to do alongside the cow. Because, Jan, that's how we spell it. We spell colour with a U. I'm British. <laughs> I use British English. <laughs> yeah, so granny circles are coming up. The knees, they are coming up. Yes, you can do those projects. So the blanket and the cushion, you can do that with the color pack. But, but, okay, you need to keep the black for your blanket border. The blanket border will use up the whole ball of black down to the last meter almost. Well, I had a little bit left. Some of the testers, we all had left, but not much. So don't use your black for the cushion. If you want to put black in the cushion, you will have to have black from an, an extra ball or another, you know, whatever, wherever you can find some black. Okay. Or if you have black in your stash, you can use that. But you will have to use the black in the ball from the color pack for your border. OK. Yeah, so generally I try to make sure that um, you can do the blanket and a couple of smaller things as well with the uh, with the same pack. Yes, I think I need to send Jan to jail. <laughs> Goodbye. We'll see you in a fortnight. Come on, Leilaka. And no crocheting <laughs> in jail. <laughs> you can take your hooks, but you can't take your yarn. <laughs> oh, she's eating now. I'll pick her up when she's finished eating. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's how that goes. <laughs> but then at the end of the cow. We generally have a wearable. So I'm now sitting on my reading shawl. So this one was the one for the green way. It's made in impressions yarn. I think we used five balls. Um, and yeah, we sort of, we, you know, we link it to the green way, which was this uh, blanket here um, as Agatha's reading shawl. You know, you've got to give the the baby a name, right? Okay. 
And then here, this one, who remembers this one? It's, um, it's the Mobius shawl. And that was a, um, a shawl as well for, that was a wearable for a, um, how did I wear it again? I think I did it like this, didn't I? That was one for, no, because it was twisted round the front. So it must be twisted at the back at the moment. Um, and there we go. So this was a wearable that went with one of my um, other cows. Anybody remember which one it was? Yes, Mary. Yeah, of course. Here, I've got the shawl. Yeah, I've got the book. <laughs> oh, yes. Love the Morbius shawl. I, you made two, Fran. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yes, Bridget, it was the Harlequin. So we made a lovely little, a little wearable. And that's great because sometimes this one, I've worn this so often. Yeah, like it. Come. I like come. There we go. Let's say hello. Hello, everyone. I've worn this so often um, in my winter coat because if you have a big shawl, where do you keep it all? You know, then you have to have it in the front here. So what I do in the winter in with my, uh, you know, big um, winter coat, all you need is something to keep your neck warm, really. And then you put your coat on. And this sort of comes out of there. But you don't need anything here because you've got your big coat. Oh, look at her. Look at her. Um, so this is what I, you know, this is how I've been wearing it. And the other day I needed it. And I just, because it's small, it, of course, I've got everything on a shelf. And it, get, it sort of got towards the back. And I was like digging for it in between blankets and bigger wearables. But yeah, I love this. I love the way it, um, you know, you can just wear it around your neck. Fantastic, Liz. That's great. Fantastic, Nessa. That's lovely. Yes, the marble hexagon cardigan. Yeah. There seem to be so many. Hello, Martha. Hello. Yes, Krista, it doesn't last long. When I put something on Layla, she just, off she goes, right? You don't appreciate it, do you? She's got her own coat on already. <laughs> you have a long list, Martha. Yes, don't we all? <laughs> right. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay here? Layla, go. Layla, go. Look, Miss Scott, go. Yes, Claudia, wear, wearables and blankets. Yeah, I've seen quite a few people say, you know, I like Mary making a wearable, but I also enjoy a blanket. You know, a bigger project, a smaller project, uh, or have two on the go, have a blanket and a smaller project on the go. And that gives you a little bit of, you know, gives you a little bit of um, variation. You can work on something that you know that you're going to finish soon. Um, and then, yeah continue with the blanket as if sometimes I have a blanket as a bed project and I just keep it next to my bed do one row maybe a night or two rows before going to bed but just you know it doesn't have an end date really it's just for that little bit of relaxation before going to bed sort of wind down calm down before you go to sleep and I think sometimes that's a the, the best blanket that you can make because it's you know, it's doing something for you as well. So, um, yes, there are advantages, of course, to making blankets. It's a big project. You don't have to think, oh, what am I going to make next? It's nice to do. But then there are disadvantages. People don't like doing bigger projects because they can't see the finish line. OK, you want to see the finish line. Making smaller projects, making wearables, making shawls. Those are finished quicker. but. My question now is, yes, you make small items, you make a wearable, but do you wear them? Do you actually wear them? 
I mean, I've worn this. I mean, looking at it, it needs a wash. <laughs> I have worn this a lot. Um, that cardigan, I wore that every day for months on end. It's gone a little bit less now because then I had, of course, the marble cardigan to wear. And now, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> You'll know in a moment what I've been wearing. You will know. You will know. Yeah, two projects, Hella, a cardigan and a blanket. Yeah. Always wearing your Agatha shawl. Sometimes. Now, Vinita earlier said you need to make a cooking shawl, a cleaning shawl. A... I have a cleaning shawl. Well, the other day I put on, and I love that shawl, the Woodbury Walk. The, no, what's it called again? The Woodbury Castle shawl, right? And I love that shawl. I still love that shawl. But you can you put it on and you put it back and I attach it with a button. So once you have it on, it stays on. It doesn't go anywhere. And I think I was doing a little bit of cleaning and sorting and doing stuff. And I just wore the shawl. And, it you know, you don't have to readjust it. You don't have to tie it or anything. It's just there. So when I read, uh, Vinita, earlier when you said, oh, you've got to make a cleaning shawl. I thought, I have a cleaning shawl because I wear that Woodbury Castle shawl, um, you know, for when I'm doing things like that. So. You know, thank you. Yeah, oh, Raffaella, of course, we love anything that, um, yeah, wraps. Yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, it's great that we're wearing them, but sometimes people feel uh, self conscious when they're wearing them. I've gotten over that now, you know, I wear them, you know, and um, the first time I wore this cardigan into town. I got so many compliments and even a lady in a shop said, would you make me one? And I was like, no, I can't. I can't possibly make you one. I said, I can show you how to make it, but I don't have time to make one. So that was the biggest compliment, to be honest. Um, but yeah, obviously making her one would have been uh, <laughs> far too much time uh, for me because, of course, I've got other videos to make. I've got other crochet uh, projects to do. Yeah. So, yes. You, and, of course, like uh, with the reading shawl, it's lovely to wear when you're sitting in bed, when you're sitting in your sofa. You know, like I said earlier, people thought it was good for, uh, you know, if you're in a wheelchair or something like that, it makes it so much easier. So, again, you know, every shawl has its advantages. Uh, like this one here, you know, the snow moon shawl is just a little bit of a fancy shawl. It's It's got the tassels. It's got the color, you know, so I like wearing that as well to go into town. But, yeah, like I said, this one here, very practical just to keep, your, you know, every wearable has its own. Properties, you know, has its own advantages. So that's why, um, yeah, for car journeys would be nice as well, Karen. Um, but also, I mean, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I need this or oh, I need, oh, I can make it. I can make it. You know, so whatever you fancy that you might need, you can make it. Wonderful, Beth. That's great. The shawl hanging on there is the snow moon. Snow moon shawl. Uh, Tatiana, if was, I'd love to hear your views on changing yarn. So what do you mean? Color changing like this one? Because um, for wearables, I personally like plain. So I like a one color. This snow moon one was the first item of clothing that I had with different colors. And I had a bit of a, you know, it, I had to get used to that. Uh, but now I have the outfit for it to go with and I'm fine. But yes, yeah, so I need a plain dress to go with that. So I can't put anything too colorful with it. So I, do you know what I mean? So either the dress is plain and then I can wear a, a multicolored uh, shawl, or either your outfit is, is sort of multicolored, 
and then I need to wear a plain shawl. Possibly, Claudia. Yeah, so look up. Okay, Tatiana. Okay. Uh, so, yes, the snow moon. Um, can somebody um, post the link for it or something? But it, I think it, you, if you type in snow moon Ophelia talks, you should find it. So, yes, substituting your uh, yarn um, thickness, you mean, um, Tatiana. So, this one here is uh, impressions. It's an Aran weight, so it means it's um, the stitches will be slightly bigger. So if you were to make this in DK, you will have to do more rows to get the same size shawl. So yes, you can substitute your thickness of yarn, but there's going to be consequences. If you were to make this in chunky, you will have to do less rows to make the shawl this size. So you, you obviously, if you want to, you can, but you need to realize that it might turn out bigger or smaller if you do it the same way. Okay, so do you under, do you, yeah. Oh, Jan, are you leaving us? Well, first you, you're naughty and I put you in jail. Now you're leaving us. Unbelievable. This kind of behavior. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you. Fantastic, Teresa. Fantastic. I know. Yeah. So all the things. So the thing is, you see, uh, Dirk and I were looking at the videos that are the most popular on the channel. And guess which, well, which wearable, which wearable is the one that's viewed the most, the most views on the channel? Can you guess? Because there's a couple of videos that have a lot of views, but that's like the flat circle. So that is, um, that is very popular. But then there's another wearable and and we haven't discussed it yet yes julia and Tata tatiana you are correct it's rachel's poncho yeah the pixie bolero yeah so although this one is very popular and we have sold a lot of patterns for this one as well the views for Rachel's poncho, and of course, yeah, it doesn't help that there's like a lovely, you know, mannequin almost, you know, sort of, you know, clear skin, nice figure in the thumbnail. <laughs> That's my daughter. Okay. Uh, yes, it's the, it's her. It's her poncho. And of course, I haven't got it anymore. She's got it. Uh, so I am going to ask her to... Um, take some more pictures or to send some pictures to us so we can post them um, so we can, you know, remind ourselves of that pixie bolero. <laughs> but yeah, she's, um, yeah, she's showing off uh, the bolero in the, um, in the lookbook and of course in the tutorial. And I think it helps. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to ask her to model one again. <laughs> <laughs> soon soon <laughs> um the thing is you see i had to bribe her i had to buy her a new dress i had to feed her that day i had to take her out for dinner <laughs> oh thank you darlings thank you <laughs> but yeah it's um it's typical of course that uh, that's the one that's viewed the most i i i very often get oh mommy look at this you know Look at how many views I've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's worth it. Yes, Laurie, of course she's worth it. She's absolutely worth it. It's always fun to have a little uh, to have a little go at her. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah. 
it's lovely that she, um, you know, and also to be honest, I mean, she did really well because filming in London, you know, wearing a dress and a, and a little bolero and then walking in London and then, you know, me filming her and following her she, in the beginning, she was like a little bit, Oh, are we sure we're going to do this? But then after a while, she was just like, woof, off she went and she was doing it and she couldn't stop actually. She kept going and she kept doing things. And I was like, yes, this is perfect, you know? Uh, but yeah, she did really well. So she deserves, she deserves her views. <laughs> right. Okay. So without further ado, no, there's one more thing I would like to talk about. Um, do you sell your items that you make? Okay, so this is what I've been um, wanting to talk about for a few weeks now. First of all, I want to say anything you make with my patterns, I am more than happy for you to sell. I am more than happy for you to use those patterns and to try and, uh, you know, sort of sell them, make a bit of money, give yourself some more yarn money or whatever you need to uh, sell the things for. If it's a little business for yourself, I'm very happy that you um, that you use my patterns. OK, and I've said this before. Um, thank you, Regina. Yes, it was a great design. I have to say, you know, that I know the design was simple yet effective. And that was the secret. That was a secret, Regina. Yeah. Um, so please go ahead and anything, any of my videos, if you want to sell the items, go ahead. OK, but. But. Um, if you give the things away, perfect, perfect for charity, anything you want to do with them, that's perfectly all right with me. OK, there's no need to sort of ask me for permission or whatever. If it's an Ophelia Talks pattern, do what you want with it. OK, but OK, and this is a serious talk now. OK, I, you know, Derek sometimes takes some of your pictures, some of my pictures, some of my projects, some of my items, and he puts them in a post and he promotes. He says, look, this is what this person made. Isn't it wonderful? This is the video. OK, and it looks like it's a selling post. And I get these messages via Instagram or via Messenger. And it says, can I purchase this item? And then they send the picture along. OK. So this is even if you're not selling, this is something that and if you are selling, this could be a big problem because sometimes these people are scammers. Well, all of the ones I've had are scammers. OK, they ask you, can I buy this from you? And then you say, and I I've done this. I've played, I've, you know, I've um, been playing the devil's advocate. OK, I said, yes, you can buy this. Um, no, they say, do you sell this? I said, yeah, I sell this. But of course, I mean, I sell the yarn. Right. And then they say, oh, where do you live? And then I said, well, where do you live? Because I'm thinking I'm not going to give my address. Do not give your address. OK, never, never. If you have a selling page on any social media, you've got to go through that. But they do go on that as well. OK, so you've got to be very, very careful with the information that you hand out. Do not give them your address. Do not tell them which even which country you're in, because it doesn't matter to them because they're going to scam you. It doesn't matter. I was even um, even if I replied, where are you from? And then she said, it doesn't matter. Can I have your address? And I'm like, why doesn't it matter? Surely, you know. It does matter. And then she said, or he said, I don't know whether it was a he or a she. Um, Do you have Zella? So they ask you about a payment method that maybe doesn't exist or that you won't have. And then they 
in a in a, some sort of way they will ask you for your name your address and your bank account details because you then have to pay them a small amount for them to then pay you but they never pay you they just with those amount with that information that you have given them they can take all your money in your account so please please if you get approached by someone who says can i purchase this how much is this be very careful okay if you are if you do sell on a platform do not sell any other way yesterday or the day before i sent them the link to our website and i said look this is where you can buy the pattern this is where you can buy the yarn you can make this yourself you know i was being very you know sort of you know happy and I, I said you know no i'm not selling this but you can learn to make this and then she said or he said i can't go to your website and i'm like but but it's here you can just it's easy to go to the website i was playing you know devil's advocate she said no i can't go to your website i said well i don't sell via instagram because and then i said it i said because there's too many scammers out there and then they said okay bye <laughs> So I've been playing along to try and get information from them, but obviously not giving away that I know that this is a scam because I don't sell anything. But please, please do not give any information out to anybody like that. Get them. If you do sell it, sell it via a platform where they take the money and they give the money then when it's all done okay like there's vintage there's etsy there's um other things you know facebook marketplace is known for scammers okay so please if anything like this happens even if you just post a picture of your make on a social media and somebody approaches you saying can i purchase this even if you're not looking to sell just don't say no i don't sell and don't go, you know, don't even be tempted because all they do is empty your bank account. OK. So that's something that I've been wanting to uh, discuss for a few weeks. And I just you know what I'm like, I want to give you all the information um, so that, you know, you don't have any, um, you know, any unfortunate events happening to you. Right now, you've all been so good. Let me show you the wearable for the color theory. It's a cardigan. It's a black, it's a black cardigan. You can make it in any color you want, okay? I wanted a black cardigan, a summer cardigan, a short cardigan. Look at this. Ta -da! This is the cardigan and look, it's got holes. It's got structure, look at this. So, I'm going to take this cardigan with me. Yes, I'm going to take it with me to Venice and I'm going to film it there because I think it's going to be perfect in the streets of Venice. <laughs> and I will be making the lookbook there and then I will the the uh, tutorial is all filmed and then I will be adding some of the of course of the lookbook footage into the tutorial and when we finish the cal this is what's going to be published so I hope you will look forward to making a summer cardigan a short cardigan which is sort of open at the front Oh, Molly, do do uh, let us know. Maybe we could meet. I don't know where you would be in Venice. Let us know. Send us an email. <laughs> yes, it's a and I have been wearing this cardigan non stopped, non stop. I have washed it already. I've had to um, save it at one point, you know, from. Uh, <laughs> from the car basically <laughs> you know i've been wearing this with a dress over a, oh my goodness i yeah and layla's already um you know put her poor uh nail in it already as well but never mind i don't care yes look at that 
So it's a particular way of making. It was so easy to make. The way I've constructed this, again, it can be made to any size on you, on a cardigan that you already wear. It can, of course, be made, you know, this is sort of, you know, this is hip. You know, it sits on my hips. You can make it shorter. You can make it longer. If you wanted a longer cardigan, you can. This is um, this is uh, the Wendy Cotton with Love. So this means um, it is um, cotton and acrylic. Okay. So cotton and acrylic, and it's easy to wear. It doesn't feel like you're you know, this one is acrylic, obviously, and it's nice and warm, and that's great. But this is perfect for a wearable for the summer. It's great. So it's 50-50. Yeah, I love wearing it. I've been wearing it nonstop. I have to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, with a different, because now I wore this dress for the reading shawl, but with a summer dress, I mean, I have worn it with with this and then with my black pearls and my black earrings. I mean, it, it looked, you know, finished, <laughs> elegant, sophisticated. <laughs> uh, Jan, if you want to do that, that's fine. Go on, get started. <laughs> she says, make one in every color of the color wheel. To be honest, Jan, you could. You could make... The, this cardigan is really easy to make. Once you've made one, of course, you'll have the pattern, you know, for, for yourself because you can make it to your body shape. Um, once you've got your pattern going, you'll have it for, uh, for others, obviously. Um, but you're... The, yeah, and then choose which, yeah, I mean, my brain is going, sorry, I can't make any any proper sentences, it seems, but I'm just thinking, of course, yes, it would be so good to have the this type of cardigan in your wardrobe in various colours to go with all your various dresses. Yes, crocheting, we sell the yarn, yeah. We sell this yarn. So these days, all everything I make is with yarn that we sell. So I make sure that everything, every project that I do, you will have the video, the pattern. If I make a written pattern, there will probably be a written pattern for this. I can't remember whether I've done that, but I think I have. And we will have the yarn. So we will enable you to make everything that I publish on the channel now. Okay. Um, yeah yeah of course i mean i wanted it short because i wanted it as a um as a summer cardigan right so it finishes sort of on my hips but thinking about it it wouldn't be hard obviously to make it longer and to make it in a different color so i am yes i might actually do that <laughs> yes i see blue that's a nice one, isn't it? With jeans. Yeah, would be wonderful. Cream. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jan, it is smarter than you then. <laughs> Are you back already? <laughs> or did you never leave? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, D, but you know what? If you wear it, you know, like this, okay, I have to say, two years ago, I bought a black cardigan and I, I've been wearing it. But then I thought, I can make my own. So if you can make your own cardigan, I don't think it's more expensive to buy a cardigan. So, and if you're wearing, I mean, the amount of times that I have already worn this, it was worth it. I mean, the yarn, the cost of the yarn, it was worth it. A denim blue one. The problem is, Karen, the, the colours are, it's either ice blue or royal blue. There's not really a denim blue in that, in that uh, range. Um, Teresa, I don't know. I don't know. Can I look it up? Um, I have no idea. I can't remember how much it weighs. 
four balls. I think four balls. Um. Yes, boho dresses with skirts and yeah, yeah. See, Laurie, that's the thing. When we make our own wearable, you can make it to what you want it to be. The cardigan that I bought, the black cardigan that I bought, same length, right? Same this, but it has three quarter sleeves. And I'm like, I wish it had longer sleeves. This one, yeah, I've made the sleeves so they're exactly the length that I want. And, you know, I normally don't get long sleeves on a cardigan because my arms are quite long. <laughs> so, you know, you can make the sleeves your size. That is the advantage of making your own wearables because you can make them to your size. I could have I can make short sleeves as well. Or I can make the body longer. <laughs> yeah, of course, obviously, black. Um, not everybody likes to work with black. Um, I don't mind because I think it's worth it. <laughs> you just need good lighting. You, The stitches are still the same. The stitches, the stitch um, is still made up the same. The anatomy of the stitch is still the same. You don't need to see it. You know where to go. Um, I will do, uh, I will talk about that more uh, by the time the video comes out. But yeah, I don't mind. But of course, yes, there are other colors. You can make this in another color. And I do believe I have done the tutorial in a different color. So you can actually see what I was doing um, because on video, again, it's not so easy. Obviously, I didn't do the whole thing in, in another color. I just explained the stitch to you and everything else that you need to know in a different color. Um, but um, yeah, I made the cardigan in black. Now, another thing that I wanted to say about the color theory is don't worry about the black border if you're worrying about using the black, because I have designed the black border in such a way that you don't have to go into the stitches. And that's half of the problem, okay? Yes, Ingrid, exactly. Yeah, if you have long arms, I never have sleeves that are long enough. So I just made sure these ones were. Um, and that uh, that just makes such a difference to be able to make something that fits you properly. And I have washed this and it didn't shrink, okay? Now you might think, oh, it is a bit short, but I want the dress to go just over it okay so when I have a dress with long sleeves it just peeps out a little bit and that was my my whole set out <laughs> so yeah so um next week we've talked about next week so that's good next week Sunday we are not here so there is no live because we are going away to Venice to celebrate the I nearly said it then, <laughs> to celebrate his birthday, which was last month, but we are celebrating it now and it's a special birthday. <laughs> so we are going away on holiday to do, um, you know, to have a little bit of a, of a rest and to celebrate his birthday, but also to do some filming as well. Not only this cardigan, but also I've made another shawl. Yes, but of course I'm not showing you that because that's coming out later. Um, and yeah, another shawl for the Venice trip. So we'll see how that goes. And then of course we will be back on the, um, oh my goodness, what day? Yes, it's 21st birthday. Yes, of course, it's 21st, of course, of course. <laughs> Does it look a day older than that? <laughs> 12th. 
We'll be back on the 12th um, Sunday for a crochet talk. But of course, we will get started on um, the cushion and the triangles um, during we will get started on the triangles for the cushion uh, in the week that we're away. So that's another, um, so that's for the, oh my goodness, I get so confused. That's for the cushion there. So we'll get started on the front and then um, week three, of course, while we're away and then we'll be back and then the cushion as well. Okay. Oh my goodness. Things are going Time flies, time flies. Uh, Stephanie, it will be there. It will be on the channel. The cardigan won't come out until until uh, the 29th of May. So the 22nd, I will be posting or publishing the lookbook. And on the 29th, I will be publishing the tutorial for it. OK, so um, that's when the cardigan is coming out. So I will have to get my skates on because I am only filming the lookbook things uh, for it. But I'll have a couple of days, so that's fine. <laughs> uh, the last day to order from our uh, website would be Thursday before three o'clock BST. OK, so before... Uh, he says next Friday. I'm saying next Thursday. Yeah, okay. I was just making sure that Friday would be the last time he would be able to go to the storage. But also we have to leave in the sort of late afternoon to get to the hotel to then because uh, we're staying away before we fly. So we're going to the airport before we fly, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, so, yes, there we go. Friday before he'll 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 probably go to the post office and then we'll just go off then we'll go off oh wonderful claudia that must have been fantastic oh wow that's one of our i think for both of us for um to i'm um, speaking for him as well but i think that's one of the things we would love to do as well yeah Hi, Sharon. I'm so sorry you have made it here, but we are just about to say goodbye. So you're going to have to go back and watch it from the start. So, yes, we are here every Sunday at 8.30 BST. So that means GMT plus one. Um, and yeah, so not next week because we're away on holiday. But we will be back on Sunday, the 12th of May, with lots of stories. And Dirk will be here as well. So we'll be, it'll be the two of us talking about our time away and what's coming up for the channel in the coming months. So thank you all for... Oh, I'm just reading some of those lovely messages. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the yarn is the Wendy Cotton with Love. Four balls. And fabulous. It looks fantastic in the peacock colours. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. I will see you. Sharon, I'm in the UK. We're in the UK. OK, I will see you in two weeks. Ooh. Six, in two weeks, three weeks or whatever, whenever. 12th of May. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.